This lecture is on pulmonary edema. It's one of the more commonly ones used that I use, so I think this will be a very good one for you guys to review. So again, remember we have a lot of different signs. By now we've gone through a good number of them, A lines, B lines, lung points. Uh, now you're becoming closely becoming an expert uh, of lung ultrasound. Uh, so again, we can find many, many things. Uh, this particular one is going to be on pulmonary edema. Now, same thing, uh, you have to have your problem-based problem, problem -based approach. So in this case, I usually use this in scenarios where I have a, either a cardiogenic pulmonary edema type patient or if I'm trying to look for fluid status evaluation. I incorporate pulmonary edema evaluation in all my emergency cardiac exams. Uh, as you go through the cardiac modules, you'll see that I mentioned it over there also. That evaluation of pulmonary edema is very important. So for interstitial edema, what are your focus questions? Your focus question is, are B lines found in the bilateral anterior chest fields? And your second focus question is, is uh, lung sliding present <clears throat> lung sliding present or absent? Uh, the probe that you use is the, either the abdominal probe or the cardiac probe with the abdomen preset. It's usually easiest to see the B lines with the abdomen preset, but the newer machines now actually have lung presets, so that's also important for you to be able to, to use. So for principles of lung ultrasound, remember we have the three different zones. I think for pulmonary edema that's clinically relevant to the emergency medicine care or critical care is evaluation for B lines in the anterior zones. If you have a patient that's in the ICU for, let's say, two or three months, almost all of them have B lines in the, in the posterior zone, so it's very hard to make any clinical judgments based on that. But if you have a patient with anterior zone B, uh, B lines bilateral, that indicates a lot of things that could be going on. So your main point is going to be your upper blue point or, right, or just lateral right and left of the sternum. So this is a stage one anterior wall exam. So B lines arise from fluid air artifacts and give a hyperechoic pattern and up to a completely diffuse white pattern called a Birlow variant. You conclude that fluids traditionally described as anechoic make hyperechoic tones when small and surrounded by air. So a B profile is a hemodynamic pulmonary edema profile. And what, that, what I mean by profile, as you'll learn when I talk about <clears throat> profiles with the uh, acute respiratory failure, is you have to have bilateral anterior, predominantly B lines, with lung sliding. That's a pulmonary edema pattern. <clears throat> if you have, um, remember, you have to have more than two to three B lines. Uh, a lot of normal patients, a lot of normal uh, non-patients have one or two B lines. It doesn't mean that they have pulmonary edema. The more pulmonary, the more B lines you have, the more problematic the condition. So without lung ultrasound, bilateral B lines, with, without lung sliding on lung ultrasound, bilateral B lines could represent ARDS or a pulmonary fibrosis type pattern. If you have A lines on one side of the chest and B lines on the other side of the chest, then that could indicate either aspiration or early pneumonia. So B line essentially is a thickened interlobular septum, which then becomes alveolar fluid. It's a pressurized transudate, includes all interlobular septa up to the anterior wall against gravity. Transudates are supposed to not impair lung dynamics and explains preserved lung sliding. Once you have impaired lung dynamics, uh, the processes become either a bilateral pneumonia or bilateral ARDS, um, and it's not pulmonary edema anymore. Posterior can be physiologic in leaky states, and almost everybody in our ICU and emergency medicine that you're doing this on has sepsis or some kind of malnutrition. Now remember, you're going to be doing this anterior exam primarily in patients that you're worried about volume status or that you recently put on non-invasive ventilation or intubation. Doing this exam on a patient in a clinic or doing the exam on a patient that is not in the appropriate setting may not translate to the same results. Although I say that, there is some new literature coming out on using this type of uh, evaluation 
on pregnant patients, postpartum patients, patients in congestive heart failure that are in clinic to kind of evaluate their pulmonary hemodynamic status. So remember, the more B-lines there are, the more of a problem. One B-line doesn't mean anything. If you have two to three B-lines, five to six B-lines, or a full uh, white um, B-lines, the full complex, then it could mean something. Here's a picture that I showed in the earlier basic lung ultrasound where you see just regular two or three B-lines with lung sliding. Here's, I just want to show you guys again, the difference between A-lines and B-lines. A-lines are horizontal, B-lines are vertical. So if, remember to tell the difference between the two. Here's a patient with B-lines. And although it's hard to tell if this is from just a two couple one second or two second clip or if the patient's uh, beating, moving, or if it's a heart, but you can definitely see some lung sliding right here. Remember, if it's difficult to see, you can always zoom in on the pleura and then look at it closer with a different type of probe, either a vascular probe or a lung presets. Here's a patient that's zoomed in a little bit. You see the rib with a rib shadow, rib with a rib shadow. You see the pleura, and you see these B lines that shoot all the way down to the bottom. And then you definitely can see some lung sliding. Here's a patient with absent lung sliding. So you see two B lines, but you don't see any movement of the pleura. Now, obviously, I'm trying to show you movement of the pleura, but the depth is like so, so much, 16 centimeters. So what would be more beneficial is if you zoomed into about this area and then made the, made the gain a little bit less where you can just see this line, and then you would really be able to clarify that there is no lung sliding. Here, here's what I was showing you about. Uh, here's a patient that I was showing you about uh, pulmonary contusion. So essentially, here's a rib shadow, rib shadow. Here's some fluid. And this is called the burial low variant, where you have like total white, white out. <clears throat> now, this is not a clip. This is just a still image. But what I wanted to mention to you was sometimes you can see this with pulmonary contusions. Here's a patient with lung sliding. So if you were unable to kind of see before, you can see definitely with this, as the, even though the chest wall is moving, you can also see the B lines are moving back and forth. Now, same thing again with this, you could zoom into the pleura and look a little bit closer, but you can, you can once you do a lot of these, you'll be able to tell this fairly quickly. Once you determine that there's lung sliding, remember, it's important for you to identify whether this is a unilateral process or if it's a bilateral process. If it's a bilateral process, that indicates pulmonary edema. If it's a unilateral process, it could represent early pneumonia or early aspiration pneumonia, which then one to two days later could become B lines without lung sliding, unilateral, and that would indicate a pneumonia. Again, here's some... A lines and B lines. In some literature, it says that you can't have both, but in my experience, I've seen some with aspiration pneumonia, especially when this happens early, early in the process, uh, where you do the lung ultrasound right after you put them on CPAP or right after they've come up from a, a floor setting or some other setting. So you can see A lines, and then as the patient breathes, you can see some B lines coming into the picture. So remember, the two questions actually are, are B-lines found bilateral anterior chest fields, and is there lung sliding present or absent? Those are the important questions you should be asking to see if there's pulmonary edema. This is a very important concept to uh, repeat and go through if you didn't understand it, because you will be using the evaluation for pulmonary edema in other parts of critical care ultrasound, such as cardiac exam. You'll also be using it to evaluate the acute shock patient the acute hypoxic patient. So it's very important. I actually use this very frequently uh, during my rounds in the ICU. Thanks, that's it.